Hi there, it's Pete the Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords with my review for Zatu of this, A Fistful of Meeples by Final Frontier Games. And I'm hiding it with my finger because those of you who know will know this is artwork by the Miko. It looks really like his work. Those of you that have played Robin Hood and the Merry Men or have played any of the sort of North Sea Saga, Paladins, Architects of the West Kingdom, any of those games, you'll recognise this artwork straight away. It's a really nice looking board. It isn't particularly big, so tables, you know, you don't need a big table to play this game. I'd argue you could play this, you know, it's the kind of game you could take with you on holiday really easy. It's not a big box um, and it can be played on a relatively small table. So, what's the game all about? Well, not surprisingly from the name, it is all about the meeples. And the meeples are really nice. You've got these lovely little cowboy meeples. Let me just show you there. So, these are your basic cowboy meeples or builders. Um, the little brown ones. These guys will help you build um, different... Basically, you get to build on any of those building spaces that run up and down each side of Main Street. You then have... Miners, these yellow meeples, these are brilliant little guys. Once you own any of the buildings on Main Street, if you place a miner in front of that building, you're able to mine that area for resources. We then have um, every Wild West town will have some of these. You have your bandits, your bandits, the red meeples. Those bandits will steal from any of the miners you place um, the bandit in front of that building of. So if you've got two miners in a building and you place a bandit in front of that building, you'll be able to take four resources from the bag. You get to take two resources for every miner that a bandit robs. Of course, if you've got bandits, then you need to have the good guys. And here they come. Here are the deputies, the little blue meeples. And in a similar way, if you place a deputy outside one of the buildings that contains a bandit, you're able to take that bandit or those bandits off to jail. You place them in the jail, which is at one end of Main Street, and you get to take two resources for successfully capturing any bandits. And that's the basis of the game. In essence, you take a fistful of meeples from any one of the building slots, and then you start to place them either left or right from the adjacent building onwards down Main Street. So I've talked about most of the different meeples, there is one special one that I need to talk about. She runs the saloon, and of course, it's the Madame. Here she is, in all her purple glory. And the Madame has got a slightly different uh, mechanic. Uh, she starts life living in the saloon, which is another one of those buildings at the end of the board. Um, and when you decide to take them, her out of the saloon and place her in front of a a building you want to place her in front of a building that is full of builders because you get one dip in the bag for every builder she takes back with her to the saloon so a really really useful character to send those builders back um, so I'll keep talking about these resources what are the resources well you get this little bag so you get these little cubes they're steel and gold why are they so important well they are the key resources in the town. So if I want to place a builder outside this building and I want to place and I want to own that building, I need to pay one gold and two steel. And if I do that, I can place my um flag, my flag across the top of that shop and now that is my shop. If I then next turn and I'm able to place one of those miners I'm able to take two digs into the bag to get resources. If, however, I've still got some extra resources, I've got later on in the game, I might have another two steel and one gold. I can place a builder in front of that um, shop and I'm able then to upgrade my building. You can see that because it's got the stripes on it. This now is worth... 10 points rather than 5 in the end game scoring but if I go back and mine this shop I'm able to take 4 resources from the bag so gain even more opportunities to build. The more buildings you get and the more buildings you upgrade the more end game points you get so it's 5 points for a basic building the upgraded building gives you 10 points. 
Um, there's another lovely mechanic in this game, which is down in the bank, which is another end of Main Street. Here it is, the bank here. And you'll see there's six, seven, and eight slots there with two spaces. And those spaces are for the gold bars that are at the bank. Basically, if you ever have six gold in your possession and there is a gold bar in the bank worth six, you have to trade your six gold for a gold bar. That's good in some ways because that's going to give you 10 points at the end of the game. However, if you were just about to build something and you'd got five gold and you'd got some steel and you were going to build a shop and you pick out of the bag another gold um, piece, you have to take the gold bar and you lose your six pieces of gold, which means you can't then do the building. So when and where you place and take the actions from your meeples on Main Street is really important because if you do it in the wrong order, you can end up taking those gold bars and not being able to get all the additional resources that owning the shops provide you with. So there's balance here. You need to get the shops building and upgrading so that you can get more uh, of the resources throughout the game, but at the same time work towards those gold bars. There's different ways you can play this game, different tactics. Now, we've talked about the jail. The jail I'm just going to try and find it on the board quickly. So here is the jail section. And you'll notice there's dynamite here. So uh, as the game goes on and those bandits are rounded up by the deputies and placed into jails, it might come a point where you decide, I'm going to take, I'm going to bust those bandits out of jail. You take all the bandits and you follow the normal rules. Whenever you take the meeples out of a room, you move them around, placing them in order in one direction or the other outside of a different building and take the actions. When you take the bandits and bust them out of jail, you also place a dynamite red cube into the bag. If at any point in the game that dynamite is pulled, it blows and everybody loses half their steel. So there are some benefits, but some risk associated with taking those and bandits out of jail. Of course, when you take them out, you can place them and rob from any miners that you find in the shops that you go in. So, we have the meeples, four different types of meeples. We have all the different shops that we can up, we can build on and then upgrade to give us end game bonuses. We have gold bars that give us end game bonuses. Um, and we have that basic mechanic of, on your turn, taking the meeples from inside one of shop and then starting to place them so if I took the meeples from this one, I can either start here or here and place them in one direction. You can't go back past the shop you've been, you've taken those meeples from. You then choose in any order which actions you're going to take, which um, meeples you're going to use the actions for first. That's important because if you've placed one where you're going to build, you might need to get the resources first. So you might choose to rob that miner to give you the resources to enable you to build. So Planning your turns is really important. And the only other place that I haven't talked about yet is the end of Main Street where you can see the guns. And that that's the same on both ends. And it, whenever you place one of your meeples on that space, so you're going round the corner of, at the end of Main Street. So I've say taken meeples from here. I've placed the first one here. The second one has to go here and the third one goes there. If I place one on the showdown space, I place my marker and then the meeple goes on top like that. I have to then wait. And it might be one turn, it might be three turns, it might be five or six turns. Eventually, one of the other players is going to place a meeple on their end of the showdown space on the other side of Main Street. Whenever that happens, a showdown is triggered instantly and you take a, the dice that comes with the game, each roll a dice. Um, if you are a higher value meeple, builders are the lowest value, and the deputies with their sharp shooting abilities are the highest value meeple. If you're higher than your opponent, you get one re-roll. So if you don't like your roll or they roll better, you get to re-roll and try and improve it. And the winning meeple, um, first of all, because they've you know they've won a showdown that's the game over for them. That meeple goes and sits in the saloon, enjoying the drinking with any builders that have been picked up by the madame. Um, 
the losing meeple is placed in the graveyard. Uh, there are six. Uh, there are six empty plots in the graveyard at the start of the game, um, and they all fill up through the game. The winner, not only do they take their meeple off to the saloon, depending on the value of the meeple that they've um, killed in the showdown, they will get dips in the bag for resources equivalent to the level of the meeple that they've killed. Um, so it's another way to score extra resources to help with building um, your shops to gain those end game um, scoring points. So that's the game in a nutshell. You are taking, grabbing um, those meeples, getting a fistful of meeples, laying them out around the board um, to get lots of different actions. Stealing, mining, um, arresting and putting into jail or just simply building. Or maybe you're the madame who just likes to round up builders and take them back to the saloon for a drink. Um, all of those things give you points, give you resources. The resources enable you to get points for the end of the game. And when you get to the end of the game, how does that happen? Well, there are three routes to the end of the game. The first one is you've managed to get the uh, bank completely out of gold bars. There are six gold bars at the start of the game. If all those gold bars are taken, the game ends. Similarly, there are six spaces in the graveyard, and if the graveyard is full of six bodies, the game ends. The final possibility for game end is when um, you have busted the uh, bandits out of jail at least three times, so there are three dynamite cubes in the bag. When the third dynamite cube is picked, again, we trigger the game end. Game end scoring, really, really simple you get 10 points for each gold bar. You get one point for each gold cube that you have left, and then you get five points for each one of your shops that you've built, unless, of course, they're upgraded, in which case you get 10 points. Total up the um, score, and the winner is the one with the highest score. So, what did I think of A Fistful of Maples? Well, I've played it a number of times now with different groups. It's really easy to get your head around this game. A couple of turns in and you you can see what the basic mechanics are. You get to learn how to move the meeples around and what each meeple does. So it's a really quick learning time. Um, what will take new gamers maybe a little bit longer to learn is the sort of how to plan their turns out and to think about, right, which room is the best room to take those meeples out of to give me the best possible chances of scoring. Where am I going to upgrade to give me, you know, if you can get lines of um, your shops, whenever anybody places a miner outside the front of your shop, you're able to benefit from that. If they place a builder in front of a shop that you own that isn't upgraded, if you've got the resources, you can upgrade even though it's their turn. So, the more you have in a straight line that belong to you, that's a really useful tactic to gain extra points. But your teammates are going to be trying to prevent that too. So there's lots of potential for tactical play and working out which set of meeples, which fistful of meeples from which shop going in which direction will give you the best chance of scoring. It's a neat little game. It's a great little filler. Plays in about 25 minutes, half an hour, um, depending on the number of players. Um, it's built for two to four players. It says 14 plus. I've played it with my 10 year old. He did really well at it. No problems in understanding it. So I think, you know, if, if you've got a younger child who plays games regularly, this will be easy to understand. It might be something to do with the size of the parts. I think why they put a 14 plus on it. Um, there's nothing dodgy. The rule book, really nice looking. Lovely design, lots of pictures to show you what the different things do. And it is a, it's a really simple rule book to pick up, a really simple game to play. It didn't leave me with any questions and has got a nice quick reference on the back to remind you what each thing does and how you score. I give this one a big thumbs up. I love this game. Um, I've been really pleased to get a, hand, a chance to review it. And if you're looking for a really quick, easy filler game, that's got a level of depth to it, a little bit of strategy, a nice little bit of tactics, look no further than the beautifully designed, very, very pretty Fistful of Meeples.